Hi everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Bienvenidos. Today's video is all about my acne journey, my acne story. I'm going to share with you what I've experienced with my skin throughout these past few years. This past week, I was able to attend a La Roche Posay event. And by the way, this video is in collaboration with them. So thank you for Thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. But um, I got to attend an event from them and I asked you guys on my Instagram to send me any questions that you had because there was gonna be a dermatologist there to answer everybody's questions. And you know, sometimes some of us just can't go and pay for professional help or for professional advice. So I thought it would be really helpful to film a video answering the questions that you guys have and as well share my personal experience and what I've gone through with acne. So we'll just go ahead and start off with like the basic information, my skin type and kind of where everything started. So I do have oily skin. A lot of you who have been following me for a while, you guys already know that. But um, those of you who have been around for a while, you've kind of got to see the transformation of my skin and where my skin um, started and now, you know, where it's at. And my skin, I feel like, kind of has been all over the place. Sometimes my skin is great, it's very clear. Other times, like right now, it's it's slowed down a little bit a lot less pigmentation and scarring but i am using some new products for that so i feel like that's what's kind of helping it but you guys have basically seen it all for those of you who haven't been around for a while maybe this is the first video that you're watching i basically started getting acne i want to say a little after high school i don't remember having a lot of acne in high school if anything I had little texture and bumps on my forehead because I didn't really wash my face in high school. So I think that was my issue. I had oily skin, I was in sports, I was constantly sweating, and then not washing your face and your skin, that's very bad. The most I would do is wash my face or rinse it in the shower, and that was it. So fresh out of high school, I was starting to get breakouts a lot around my cheeks, kind of like how I have it now, but a lot worse i was getting acne all under here even down to my neck and it was cystic acne and it was hormonal acne as well so for me a lot of you might not know this but i am on birth control i have an implant in my arm that definitely plays a role in how my skin reacts because they're hormones it's you know hormone imbalance and so I've over the years kind of figured out how to tone down those breakouts with the products that I use but it was rough for a while but you know what it's crazy because I always get questions like okay how do you not get self-conscious about your acne like how do you just get on camera or walk out in public with no makeup on and just feel fine and honestly to me there were times where I was just like I hate this I I don't know why it has to be me like why do I have acne why is it not going away what's going on and there were times where I wouldn't want to get on camera I wouldn't want to go out but majority of the time I was like you know what like I'm not going to let this phase me like it is what it is I know that I'm using products and taking care of my skin and trying to get rid of it but my skin is just rejecting everything that I'm doing so I'm not gonna let that I'm not gonna let that destroy me and my self-esteem everybody has issues like this and I'm not gonna walk around with tons and tons of makeup to try to cover it up and make it worse for myself and make it a harder process just because I'm embarrassed of my acne like I honestly just did not care and to this day I don't either I always go to the grocery store some of you guys have caught me at like Target or Walmart and I'm like this like no makeup on and you can see my scars and my acne sometimes my skin is a lot worse and I really don't mind it like I'll just walk around like that because I just don't care you guys I really don't I've had acne now for a while and I feel like I've tried so many different products and so many regimens and routines and facials and exfoliators and just different methods and different things to try to get rid of it and it's still not completely gone I'm still in that trial and error phase believe it or not for me it was not like what I was eating for me it was not a dairy issue me it was just my hormones and like I said for the first few months or for the first few years I really 
didn't know what to do so I ended up not really doing much to my skin and to my acne I just kind of let it be which is very bad I never went to a dermatologist because I didn't have access I couldn't afford to pay for a dermatologist and I was just like I feel like I can figure something out at home and now that I have gone to a dermatologist and I have gotten like professional help it really does make all the difference because they can pretty much pinpoint where it's coming from and what you can do about it if your skin doesn't like exfoliation don't do it like I at first was literally using an exfoliator a scrub as a cleanser morning and night and that messed up my skin I was 100% over exfoliating my skin and it was so bad my skin was just I didn't know I didn't know any better I didn't know what I was doing I just knew that that scrub was like highly recommended and all these great things so I was using it morning and night trying to get rid of my acne and trying to get rid of it and it was just making it a lot worse and little did I know I feel like that's why I have larger pores now because I was just doing way too much to my skin don't exfoliate your skin um, just because everybody else is exfoliating their skin you know every other day or two to three times a week if your skin doesn't like it maybe take a break from it that's what I did I didn't exfoliate my skin for a while I was okay let's let's jump into like the progress and the products that I was using I'm not gonna go into specifics of what products I used because I do have an entire skincare playlist here on my channel I'll leave leave it in the description box for you guys but I'm gonna talk more so about like when I got professional help and kind of what was given to me and then kind of more so what I'm trying now and things like that so once I realized and learned that exfoliating and over exfoliating can be really bad for your skin then I switched up my routine and I think that's when I started to use something more gentle a very gentle cleanser is always really really nice um, and I started to find my little routine and it calmed my skin down a little bit but it wasn't helping a lot with preventing new hormonal breakouts so i would get rid of the acne that i had but then i was still getting the next day like a new big old hormonal pimple you know here or whatever so that's when i started to want to look for somebody who can help me professionally she recommended she's a dermatologist and she recommended um i think it was retin-a and i was using that on my skin and it was helping out a lot and she also gave me some prescription pills which i'm not gonna exactly say which ones they were because for that you have to go to professional because it's based on your weight and like you how much you exercise and just all these kinds of things so for that i definitely recommend that you just go to a dermatologist but they did provide me with some pills i took those for a while but i was like i don't feel like taking drugs to try to get rid of my acne i want to do it you know a lot more topical using creams and stuff i'd rather do it that way than doing it with pills so even though she did give me those i took them for about a month or two and it did help get rid of my acne once i saw the improvement i stopped taking them and i was only using topical creams which was the retin-a and then continuing with my gentle cleansers and moisturizers and things like that and then now where i'm at and what i'm trying to figure out so you can see my acne is pretty gone uh, what i have left is pigmentation hyperpigmentation one of the things that i learned at the event is that acne scarring and like dark spots are different than hyperpigmentation so the way that she put it is that acne scarring and dark spots are more like permanent and they're really hard to get rid of you have to go through treatments on treatments to try to get rid of them whereas hyperpigmentation is that leftover like small scar from a breakout whether you pick at them or not i feel like you still get a scar at least that's what happens with me whether i pick at it or not i always have this little scar left over and that's hyperpigmentation it's a little easier to get rid of than a full-on acne scar i want to make sure that there's a differentiation because i think there's a lot of confusion out there I, at least i see it acne scarring true acne scarring is usually things like pitted scars what we call ice pick scars 
like a, a depression, it can be like a box car kind of depression, or what we call a rolling scar. There, there's a true like kind of terrain difference, right? There are depressions and elevations in the skin. That's true acne scarring, and that's forever. And there are things that we can do to mitigate it a little bit, but that's forever. A lot of what people refer to as acne scarring, even beauty editors to me, is hyperpigmentation or just discoloration from acne. The good news is that's not permanent and that there are lots of things and a lot of the products that we're talking about that actually help acne that have ingredients like um, like large oxy acid or glycolic acid promote exfoliation and it helps acne and it'll promote that pigment to move away a lot faster too so that's my battle my issue right now is the hyperpigmentation but i feel like i have to kind of work my way up i don't want to right away just jump to doing a chemical peel or going on Accutane. Like, I don't think my acne is that severe or I should say my hyperpigmentation is that severe. So yeah, just try to work with products first. And you know, if you're doing that for like years and you're like, okay, this really is not helping, seek professional help and see what they say. And then you can kind of go from there. I know it's annoying sometimes to be like, seek professional help and constantly hear that. But like, I feel like that really helps when you're at the point of when your skin is basically at the point of no return when you're like i don't know what else to do like don't continue doing all these crazy things and trying crazy different things just try to get the help or do really good research online to see what you can find okay so i am gonna slowly transition over to the q a portion of this video but i just want to say i know it can be really discouraging sometimes going through things like this with your skin I've been there. It takes, just with everything, it takes time and you'll get there at one point. Try to keep going. I know it can be stressful. I know it can be embarrassing at times. Like, I just, I know how it feels, you guys. I know what it's like to be in that position. Although my acne wasn't, you know, as bad as others, it still affected me and it's something that I feel like kind of has connected some of us because some of you go through the same things or are going through the same things that I've gone through with my skin. My skin really didn't start clearing up until about a year, a year and a half ago. And I've been going through this, like I said, since I was fresh out of high school. And I never noticed a big difference with my skin actually getting better. It wasn't until you guys started noticing and were telling me like, oh my God, your skin is clearing up. It's looking a lot better. But to me, I was still super like, my skin is staying the same. I'm not seeing a difference. But I was just expecting these quick results when in reality, it's a very slow process and once i saw you guys saying like oh my god your skin is slowly starting to clear up like it's looking a lot better than it did a few months ago i looked back at my old videos and i still look back at some of them and i'm just like whoa my skin has actually improved i just didn't notice because i see my face and my skin every single day so i don't see that difference but just know that once you find your regimen it's gonna take some time but hopefully you know it'll eventually get a lot better you are gonna catch me kind of looking up and down in this part of the video because I'm gonna be looking at this paper that has your guys's questions some of the questions were directed towards me and what I've experienced in my acne journey and other questions were more so for the dermatologist and for me to ask and find out more information about so we'll first well I'll just kind of we'll start with the ones that were addressed at the event so I got a lot and most of your questions had to do with how to get rid of dark spots or pigmentation. So first, you have to figure out if you have hyperpigmentation like I do or if you have more of those permanent acne scars and you can kind of go from, from there. So for me, since I know that I have hyperpigmentation and it's not as intense, I know it can be a little bit more topical, whereas if you do have those deeper acne scars that can't really go away with just using creams what she recommended the dermatologist was to of course seek professional help but it's more so going to be an internal thing she said that she when it comes to acne scarring and those really 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 deep scars that she goes in hard like she does usually recommend somebody to take something that is prescribed to them to drink um, whether it's like a pill or something 
because that's more of an internal thing that you just have to try to get rid of as soon as possible whereas hyperpigmentation you can use topical products so what i'm using right now is vitamin c and that's usually you know something that is recommended for somebody who has hyperpigmentation it's supposed to help with lightening so food products lifestyle even just genetics acne can just be in your genes and that's just you know something you have to work with those are all things that you have to take into consideration when it comes to a hormonal acne acne period texture blackheads whiteheads pigmentation where's the best place to start like what's a basic skincare routine and this can vary obviously but what i recommend and this is just from my experience i'm not a professional basic gentle cleanser an exfoliator that you can use occasionally, and then a moisturizer. Uh, does drinking lots of water really benefit the skin? And what about dairy? So she said, the dermatologist, she said that yes, dairy and water can affect your acne, but that's not the case for everybody. Not everybody breaks out because, you know, they eat or drink dairy products. Not everybody breaks out because they don't drink enough water. Like drinking gallons of water isn't gonna make your acne go away like magic. It takes, you know, a lot of other different things and just drinking water sometimes just is not the, the miracle worker for everybody. How often should somebody get facials? Um, some people recommend once a month. Uh, some people think that if you go over a month, it's like too long. Do what works for your skin. Should body acne be treated differently than facial acne? That's another question that I got. And when she addressed this, it was more so, she just said to use your favorite acne cleanser and to use it on those areas as well. So I want to say it can, based on what she said, it can be treated similarly but if you don't see a difference and you obviously want to kind of address it in a different way maybe on your face you just have a bunch of texture and those little white bumps that aren't really you know big breakouts that you can pick out or get rid of easily but maybe on your back you have more cystic acne or you have more of those bigger breakouts and so that those are two different things so in that case you do have to address them differently and maybe use two different cleansers typically body acne is less hormonal typically um it's if it's more it can be related to exercise i mean a lot of us are really active and it's just a little bit on the chest and like the mid chest and a few on the mid back i tell people you know get it an acne cleanser that you like and use it in the shower so you can cover the, that large sort of area of your body you want to be careful with any products with benzoyl peroxide, either over the counter or prescription. They will bleach out your clothes, so don't use them on the body. And that's something that you can learn the hard way. They can even bleach out your towels and stuff. Benzoyl peroxide is a bleach. And then um, somebody asked a little bit about ingredients, like what ingredients shouldn't be paired. That's not something that she really touched on a lot. She really only touched on ingredients for pregnancy. So some ingredients that you can and can't use for pregnancy. The ones I jotted down is like no benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid, but she said glycolic acids are usually okay. But for pregnancy, you really want to be careful with ingredients because you just don't know. Um, things can be tricky. Ingredients are difficult to read. That's one of the things she mentioned as well, especially with something like that when it comes to pregnancy. You really want to make sure that you're careful and again, seek a professional's help because you want to make sure there's not a sneaky ingredient in your cleanser you know that you're not supposed to be using or that you shouldn't be using while pregnant how has your routine changed since getting lash extension so my routine really has not changed much the only thing that i've added and this again is every once in a while an oil-free makeup remover that is it i'll just get a cotton round put some oil-free makeup remover and then I'll just take off that and then I'll go over top with my cleanser. Since my cleanser is gentle, it's not harsh, doesn't have any exfoliating anything in it. It doesn't, you know, make my lash extensions come off or anything like that. Do you ever break out from foundations? And you know what? I used to break out from foundations a lot more in the beginning of my breakout session. I guess we can call it that. But 
now I don't because I think for me it was more so a thing of not washing my face correctly that's why I was breaking out from certain foundations like one of the ones that used to break me out I use it nowadays and it's fine because I make sure to really cleanse my skin and I know okay this foundation used to break me out so I have to really make sure that I take my makeup off completely so that I don't break out from this foundation and wake up in the morning with like all these kind of breakouts so if you do realize that a foundation breaks you out maybe stop using it for a while don't use it at all or if you are going to use it because it's like your favorite holy grail foundation um make sure that you remove it completely cleanse maybe twice with a gentle cleanser and make sure it's all off a lot of people go through this are going through this or have gone through this a lot more than you can imagine it's not something new it's not like a taboo thing people have acne acne is normal i promise you but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i love you guys so much thank you again to la roche passe for sponsoring and supporting this video and my channel and this platform um, and thank all of you guys for watching i love you all los quiero mucho and i will see you all in my next video.